Ah, Maximum Overdrive, the epitome of a guilty pleasure. I'm diving into the wild, wacky world of Stephen King's directorial debut that was fueled both by diesel fumes and perhaps a little too much booger sugar. It's coming right at you guys, so stick around. Yeah. What's going on, fellow den dwellers and Stephen King fans? I'm Scott. Thanks for tuning into the movie den, where today I'll be talking about the cult classic Maximum Overdrive. But first, I briefly want to talk about the journey of Stephen King's novels from the page to the big screen. Since the late 1970s, Hollywood has been captivated by the rich tapestry of horror and suspense spun by the prolific author. The first major adaption of a King novel came in 1976 with Brian De Palma's Carrie, based on King's debut novel of the same name. The film was a critical and commercial success, setting the stage for future King adaptions. Throughout the late 1970s and 80s, everybody wanted to make a Stephen King movie, and a slew of them hit the big and small screens like The Shining, Stand By Me, It, The Stand, all to varying degrees of success. Uh, now, I've never read any of the Stephen King novels. I tried, I really tried, but I just couldn't get into his writing. But anyways, uh, I think think that helped me enjoy maybe enjoy his films a little more um not having that bias of having read the book and then watching the movie and and trying to compare it to but I, I i feel that it helped now i haven't liked all of his movies but you know i've enjoyed most of them i feel that sometimes his concepts may look great on page but the translation of film is not executed very well it wasn't until the late 1980s that Stephen King himself stepped into filmmaking with Maximum Overdrive, which was adapted from a short story, Trust. And a quick side note, the other day I discovered that there was a USA TV network movie called Trucks based on the same short story. 97, I think it was. But anyways, I decided to check it out. It's a remake but just on a more serious tone. Anyways, released in 1986, Maximum Overdrive marked Stephen King's directorial debut. Set in a world where machines come to life and turn against humanity, the film promised a unique blend of terror and dark humor. King's involvement generated significant buzz amongst fans eager to see how his distinct voice would translate to the screen. Despite the anticipation, Maximum Overdrive encountered a host of challenges during production. King, who was notorious for substance abuse issues at the time, later admitted that he was booger sugared out of his mind for much of the shoot. And this led to a chaotic and disastrous filming process with King struggling to maintain control over the production. So let's take a look at this masterpiece of filmmaking. Maximum Overdrive is the cinematic equivalent of a dumpster fire fueled by pure, unadulterated chaos. This film is a gloriously over-the-top mess that somehow manages to be both absurdly entertaining and downright cringeworthy at the same time. The Earth is besieged by a global uprising of sentient machines hell-bent on wiping out humanity. Why? Because apparently a passing comet has caused them to have a mind of their own. We're talking killer vending machines, homicidal lawnmowers, and, of course, the iconic goblin-faced semi-truck that terrorized a group of unsuspecting survivors trapped at the Dixie Boy truck stop. The direction or lack thereof falls squarely on the shoulders of King himself, who famously did admit to being booger sugared out of his mind during the film's production. And boy does it show, the film careens out of control from one nonsensical set piece to the other, with King seemingly throwing everything and seeing what sticks, and nothing does few little good moments, but, eh, didn't work. Let's not overlook the performances of the cast. Emilio Estevez is our rugged little hero, a short-order cook, who is uh, turned into an unlikely savior in the face of a mechanical apocalypse. Estevez delivers his line with the conviction of a man who knows he's in a train wreck of a movie, but he's determined to see it to the bitter end. Then there's the rest of the ensemble, a motley crew of Dinner patrons played by Pat Hingle, Laura Harrington, 
Lisa Simpson voice actor Yardley Smith, and a very young Jean Carlo Esposito. They all range from okay, I guess, to forgettable and downright cringeworthy. The script is packed with dialogue so cheesy it would give Wisconsin a run for its money. From one-liners that would make Arnold Schwarzenegger blush to clunky exposition that would make George Lucas cringe. The script reads like a fever dream penned by a middle schooler who just discovered the joy of B-movies. While the premise of sentient machines wrecking havoc on humanity may sound like a sci-fi nightmare, the execution leaves much to be desired. The special effects, while ambitious for their times, often veer into the realm of unintentional comedy, with the killer machines resembling objects from a low-budget 80s video game. The film's crowning achievement, however, is the killer soundtrack by none other than ACDC. From the opening riff of Who Made Who? To the thunderous beats of Hell's Bells. The music serves as the perfect accompaniment to the on-screen mayhem. This elevates the film from disaster to rightfully and delightfully cheesy cult classic. And yet, despite its myriad of flaws, Maximum Overdrive has somehow managed to achieve cult status among fans of great B-movie cinema. Perhaps it's the sheer audacity of its premise, or maybe it's the undeniable charm of watching a bunch of killer machines and trucks wreak havoc on unsuspecting bystanders. Whatever the case may be, there's no denying that Maximum Overdrive is a one-of-a-kind cinematic experience that must be seen to be believed. Well, there you have it, guys. Have you seen this masterpiece of drug-induced filmmaking? If you have, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't, I sure hope that you do because you're in for a ridiculous romp that you may have fallen in love with. I know I did. Guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Help the little channel grow. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell on the way out. Guys, again, it's been a pleasure. I'm Scott. This has been The Movie Den. What say you?